The 19th century erupted with a bang. The Napoleonic Wars raged across Europe, and in America, the fight for freedom saw a return conflict in 1812. However, on a small island in Southeast Asia, modern-day Indonesia, a world-changing event would occur. April 5th, 1815, Mount Tambora erupted. This event covered the earth in fine ash and particles, leading to a long winter in Northern Europe and North America. Due to the long winter and lack of summer, Northern Europe suffered in famine and disease, while North America, many Americans found themselves in harsh winter conditions and they froze to death. Amidst all the struggles of disease and famine, both areas were also recovering from financial hardships that were caused by lengthy wars. In the end, the winter of 1816 would drive America to expand and grow, while in the United Kingdom it caused several more years of famine, disease, and heartbreak, showing the policy that makes the disaster. Over 200 square miles in an area was covered 12 feet deep in ash, stone, and pumice. 12,000 people died in just moments, many of which were natives of the island chains. By itself, a great natural disaster, loss of life, and something no one could have ever predicted given current science. Yet, the dying didn't stop there. Winter's harsh hands gripped North America and Europe. April passed, May carried on, and in June, the harsh winter winds still continued to whip and hound both animal and man alike. Hannah Dawes Newcomb would add more wood to the fire before she would record the day in her journal. Weather continues very cold. All nature appears encircled in gloom. Grass very thin. Corn so backwards it does not appear probably there will be food sufficient for man or beast. Our only hope arises from the promise of seed time and harvest. We daily keep a fire in the parlor. At the time, many claimed it was God's wrath. Historians over time have linked the events to the eruption, but also found its links to have effects over time. Scientists would write about Tambora, its mighty eruption, and how it embedded the atmosphere with sulfuric acid. This would create a shield around the world of sulfuric aerosols that would dilute the rays of light penetrating in our atmosphere. With historians and scientists working side by side, events from over 200 years ago are brought to light. What is sadly brought to light as well is reactions and actions of man during those harsh winters. Fagan Bryan, who would write about Little Ice Age and climate change, and Curtis P. Nettles, who writes about the economy in 1815, both come to similar drawing points of how policy of governments at the time made a bad winter into a nightmare. The UK was recovering from its costly wars in both North America and across Europe against Napoleon. In Ireland, due to British policies at the time that restricted what crops could be grown and what was permitted to be harvested and where it was to be shipped, saw famine rage across the country. Soon hordes of beggars would line the streets, and gutters would soon be filled with those who died from typhus. This sadly would only be a taste of the future famines to come 30 years later, due to the same policies created at this time, dooming Ireland to a horde fate for decades to come. In America, there was suffering. However, there was a strong lack of government involvement. In a twist of fate, due to America being such a young country, and not fully developed, this placed the burden of success on the people and local government. Here, many would die due to harsh cold, but many more would travel west and south, expanding the growing country. Due to the failure of agriculture in the Northeast, historians such as Jenkins would credit the time with America's baby steps into industrial revolution and turning New England area into a factory-focused economy. Overall, Northern Europe suffered famines and disease, while North America and many Americans found themselves in such harsh winter conditions they froze to death. Amidst all the struggles of disease and famine, both areas were also recovering from financial hardships that were caused by lengthy wars. In the end, the winter of 1816 would drive America to expand and grow, while the United Kingdom caused several more years of famine and disease, showing that policy makes the disaster. The United States, still trying to identify itself after gaining its freedom and its revolution and establishing itself as a power in the West after the War of 1812, had little control over its people. The lack of policy and letting each citizen in a sense fend for themselves let a more natural and logical response to a harsh winter take effect. England was the flip coin of the United States, a country so immensely wealthy from its conquests and empires, rigid in an old doctrine and fixated on profit, it had ignored the human cost, turning what would have been a harsh winter to a horrid year and a worse following decades. The volcano was natural, politics and policies are not natural. The vast majority of death caused by famine and disease, human-made action.